Welcome to Game Changers with Lisa Faulkner on Love 860 WAEC, Atlanta's inspirational talk radio. Lisa is a writer, producer, and innovative communicator with more than 20 years of experience. Join us as we connect you with inspiring experts and entrepreneurs from all walks of life. Your comments and questions are welcome during the broadcast. Call us live on the air at 404-355-8699. That's 404-355-8699. Now, here's Lisa Faulkner. Now, here is Lisa Faulkner. Hello, everybody, and thanks for tuning in for another great show of Game Changers with me, Lisa Faulkner. I'm your host. I promise you, you will enjoy this hour. I am certainly looking forward to it. I thank you so much for tuning in every week. Couldn't do it without your continued support and encouragement. You know, I always love to thank you first. Now, Game Changers, are you going over to iTunes and checking out the podcast when the show is not on and catching up on all these great Game Changers we continue to bring your way? I hope that you are. When you are there, please leave us a rating or a review. That's very important to iTunes, and I just appreciate it coming from you. Hey, guys, check out all the ways that you can get the show. That's just a podcast, but I'm talking about tuning in live right here every Saturday at 6 p.m. You can listen uh, live and on your radio or online. You can also, if you're on the go, grab up or pull up one of your radio apps and keep it moving with us on iHeart, TuneIn, and iRadio now. Always want to keep you connected, guys. But guess what? You can also follow me on Facebook, Lisa M. Faulkner, LinkedIn, Lisa Faulkner, Twitter, at PinstarLisa, Instagram, and Pinterest, PinstarLisa there as well. I will check your comments there and continue to connect with you. Always like to make those connections sound fresh for you every week. Game changers, I love it when you listen, and I love it when you connect. Hey, guys, we are live. You know the number. It's four. 304-355-8699. You can also call the 800 number 866-923-2860. Well, let's get started. Hey guys, our first guest is hailed by American and European European literary review experts as one of the greatest up-and-coming act provoking writers. We're going to learn why. This literary artist is an award-winning international and best-selling author. She also is a motivational speaker and founder of Planting Positive Seeds. And that is enough for me to say game changer, right? Welcome to Game Changers with Lisa Faulkner, LaDonna Marie. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my gosh. It's my <laughs> Hey, first, LaDonna, you got to tell us, what is an act-provoking writer? Well, act-provoking writer is, it's just like, you know, when you, when you would read, um, when you would read stuff by the, the late Dr. Maya Angelou, when you would read her words, and it's just the, the thought-provoking, it would take you to a place where it's deep within, you have to think about uh, the feelings that it would take for you to go through different things that other people will go through. And so thought that act provoking is I like to meet people where they are. I like, I like to meet you if you're in the trenches or if you're high up, wherever you are, I like to meet you there. And so that it can, you know, catapult you further to thinking about different life experiences as well as the ones that you go through yourself. Wow. That's pretty cool. I like that. And what a great model, uh, Maya Angelou. She certainly touched all of our lives. Everyone yes. on, on this planet, I'm sure, uh, old enough to read, has understood the worth and the value of the work, the great body of work that she left behind. It still lives so vibrantly in a lot of our lives. Yes. Well, thank you for that explanation. <laughs> LaDonna, what do you mean when you say you traveled a long way to the remarkable destination that you now enjoy? What does that mean? What does your past look like? Oh, wow. 
Well, my cat well, my... looks like a little girl who was, um, her voice was stifled. Like, I really, you know, I couldn't say things that I wanted to say. I always felt very different and felt misunderstood. Um, when I was about 14, I, you know, I tried to commit suicide. Um, I felt like I wasn't. I, you know, there was no place for me in this world because I was just so misunderstood. And so um, God gave me the gift of poetry. And so it became my voice. It became my voice. He said that as he healed me, he would help me to heal others. And so everything that I wrote, every emotion that I had, every thought that I had, every experience that I had and I carried, or the ones that he downloaded to me, helped me to travel along this this you know, in life, in this journey to help to empower and impact other people. I always love to touch other people, to help them, to encourage them, to empower them. And so the long journey that I've come is that now I'm fully, I'm compassionate about what I do because I've been and shared some of those places. But at the same time, I want to be the person that I needed when I was younger. I want to be that person that says, let me help you with your situation. Let me share with you some things that I've done, or let me share with you this wisdom wisdom that I've learned along the way now that I'm a therapist and a counselor. So, you know, I want to be that person that that, that that young child needs or that adult needs to help them get to a positive part in their life. Wow, LaDonna. You know, I knew that question was going to bring forward the mighty, <laughs> a mighty response, but I had no idea but it's one thing I do know about just about every game changer. They rise out of the rough. They are diamonds yes. in the rough. And wow, God bless you. God bless you for your work, your perseverance. And I know that he had a call on your life to spare you and turn do, do a 180 from a 14-year-old who wanted to take her life. Wow, right. that's really inspiring. That's really inspiring. Uh, you know, you... Um, they suffer so much and um, there's so much pressure on them. And I believe it's because they just don't have enough life experience to understand that this yes. too shall pass, that you, that they are uniquely and wonderfully and fearfully yes. made and that there is a, a, a purpose for their lives. If they could just persevere through all of the madness that life sometimes right. prevents. Right. And, you know, most game changers as well uh, always feel different and misunderstood. I have mm -hmm. to say that that's the cause with, with that's, that's the um, cause with myself as well. I, I oftentimes in my life have felt different and misunderstood. Wow. That's powerful. Well, Donna, um, now, when did you know you wanted to write? Well, I, well, like I said like earlier, I said, when when I was about 12 years old, um, I had all of these feelings. And so I used to just start to write them out in my journal. Um, I would just start to just pour out, you know, my, my feelings. And back then, not knowing that that was my form of therapy, like that was my form of therapy, writing and writing and writing. So I would share, you know, my thoughts in, in my notepad. And so when I got 14, when I, you know, got on up into high school and I started to read, uh, you know, the books from uh, Dr. Mara Angelou. And when I started to read Nikki Giovanni and Langston Hughes and, um, you know, all of those poets and authors, I decided then that I wanted to bring and put something out into the universe that will first be a legacy for me, but also to change um, to, to change the world, to, to, you know, give insight on different things for people or to share, you know, like, like lessons of overcoming, share how to come out of your adversity, share how to overcome obstacles. And so can heal, heal your heart, heal your wounds. And so when I was that, you know, that young, that was my primary goal. Like I'm going to make a difference in the lives of others. I'm going to impact lives. And so I carry that as God, you know, began to, um, unfold to me, you know, what my writing would do for other people and how he believed in me and how he, you know, he's giving me this gift to help, you know, give him the glory and to help others. It just became something that um, I've, I've been doing and I enjoy doing, you know, over all these years. Wow. You know, I believe that true writers or born writers or gifted writers, as you say, it does start in our youth. Um, and it's so powerful. I diaried and I journaled and mm -hmm. I, yeah, I carried notebooks 
And I was always fascinated with words, but I remember being mocked in school because I cared so much about words and I carried oh, wow. this notebook around and it became like my dictionary because if mm-hmm. a word came to my mind or I heard a word, I would yeah. get in the notebook and look it up and look back over that definition and incorporate it into my speech and incorporate uh-huh. it into uh-huh. my experiences and the kids gave me such a hard time about that notebook. And one day it just disappeared, you know, and someone took it from me, I believe. Yeah. And I never yeah. started another notebook like that. That was so, that was really devastating for me. But yeah. I do I believe that. True, I mean, um, mm. That happened to me, Lisa. That you are to kidding. Me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am so serious because look, I was going to tell you too. I'm always, and I tell people today, like I was like, if you want to write, everybody's saying and they got a book in their belly and I'm always telling them, well, get it out on a notepad because I take mine with me everywhere but that was how I began in the beginning because when I was in high school you know we were reading uh Macbeth and we were doing like the Julius Caesars and I had a four inch binder when I was that young and I wrote 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 I, every day I like you I took it everywhere I went and yeah. I wrote and I had a four inch binder that was so thick with poems because I would reread them and go through them and I would share them with some people and then it came to the point where we needed well, you know, when, when my classmates and I, we needed to turn in poems because we had to do like the sonnets with the rhyming lines. And I was, you know, I was good at it because I, it was my passion to write. And somebody took my binder. They didn't ask me to write them a poem, Lisa. They took my binder. And so that was when I was in high school. And I said, you know what? I'm not writing another thing because I was so yeah, devastated. Yeah, like I, they had took oh, everything from me. And then, you know, you write so much. So for me, some of the things I can't remember, but I can, you know, still uh, give you when I'm reciting it because I, I love to recite poetry. I will give you that feeling. I can connect with, you know, how I felt when I wrote it. And so once they took that from me, it took me till I got to college to start writing again because I had actually given up because I felt like so disheartened because somebody had taken my four inch thick binder of all of my hard work. So I, I can relate to that. (laughs) That is so amazing. We had the Mm -hmm. same experience and the same thing happened to me. I never wrote like that again. Mm -hmm. I never just pierced myself and my soul and the words and I would write the poetry too, but I just like journaling and writing and uh, just kind of reconciling my day and the events right. and that I never wrote like that again after that binder was taken from me. The same thing mm-hmm. happened to me. You know, it's mm-hmm. something about when you, when, when something in your youth gets perverted or taken yeah. away or distorted, I guess we just don't have the wherewithal sometimes to get it back get it back, you know, until that appointed time when it has Mm -hmm. to come back, I think. The same thing happened with my salvation. I believe the Lord has been on a relentless pursuit for me Mm -hmm. since I was a young girl. And I was really excited about getting saved one night that I was going to go to church with a friend of mine and my dad would not let me go. And that Mm -hmm. just kind of sent me off on another path for a long time. But of course, the Lord never stopped pursuing me. But Uh just him not letting me go that night kind of, you know, it was like things were not meant to be that way. And it kind of set me on a different path. So that's pretty amazing and cool at the same time that you and I had a similar experience. (laughs) That's so awesome. That is so awesome. What is that? Yeah, that is so awesome. So you've told us some of your inspiration and your passion for writing, but is there more you'd like to share about your inspiration and passion for writing? Well, um, with me, because, um, you know, myself, seeing myself as a game changer to help people because I've, you know, my degrees are in social work and counseling. So with my writing, um, I, I talk about, you know, life lessons, you know, things that we go through, like growing pain, some of the things that, you know, we were sharing how we had to learn to get over or we had to just process um, with my writing. So I do that with each book, whether it's love, whether it's encouragement, if it's self-awareness, learning about yourself, um, even to get those angry, you know, hurt. Um, feelings out because it is very, very therapeutic. And that's one of the things I was like, when I was younger, I didn't go out and do, you know, some of the, some of the things that were, you know, 
to be crazy, make these crazy decisions. But I would sit and I would write and I would write. And like you said, I would purge out my heart. I would purge out my soul. And uh, with the writing, that's the way that I love when I connect with people because uh, another thing that I always tell people, because uh, in my book, they were like, who do you write for? And I say, I, I write for the ones who need healing or they need that inspiration or they need to be empowered wherever they are. Because, you know, for me, when I was younger, depression didn't have a name. Like, it doesn't have a name that it can go directly to, but it, it goes, you know, it, it lands on many different people. And so things that I write with my writing, you can relate it to your life. It's for the reader to say, wow, this is for me, or wow, I can understand this, or hey, I know someone else who's going through this. I can share it with them. And even, you know, me starting with poetry, now God has allowed me to do devotionals. So I do devotionals as well. And with my 30, uh, Quiet Moments with God, the 31 Day of Life lessons, he was able to download a lot of things like end time things that we go through in our day-to-day life. And I think that that was amazing for me, too, because I never said, oh, wow, I can't write a devotional. I was just, I'm just a poet. But I allowed him to use me in whatever way that he wanted to use me with the written verses or with the written poetry or with the devotionals and, you know, hoping to move forward to short stories and plays and also novels. And so I I feel that my writing is evolving, but it's always centered in helping that person to be empowered, helping them. Uh, Now I have a slogan for restoration and resiliency. So I'm helping them to heal in all aspects and areas of their life. That's powerful. And and for me, that's really the making of a game changer as well. One who wants to give back, one who wants to pour out, and one who just wants to share the the what they know and the, because they know the value of their healing they've received they know the value of their knowledge yeah. they've received so every game changer wants to set their platform up in a way that they allow other people to uh, benefit from it now Ladonna you are not new to this as we are very clear on now you are true to this whole writing genre if you will you publish your first poem in an anthology whisper with the League of American Poets in 2007, and you went on to self-publish your freshman book, Expressions of Mind, Body, of the Mind, Body, and Soul, three years later, which earned a certificate of congratulations from Congressman Benny Thompson of the 2nd District of Mississippi. Tell us what you believe, LaDonna, makes your work stand out in such a way that uh, higher high figures notice it, and uh, just the society at large seems to really reap the benefits of it. I, I think that um, I think that it's, it's looking at the fact of the impact that it's making, um, because sometimes I, I, you know, me, I study, I do a lot of research about, you know, like things that are needed. So, like I said before, I'm, I'm really big on emotional help. I'm really big on. Um, the the side of people, because I look at the statistics of of the youth and even the adults that that don't get the mental, physical, and social help that they need. Some people go into, I I think at the time when I looked at it, it was 70% didn't get it and only 30% did get like the counseling or therapy or mentoring that they needed. But the rest of the 70% had to go into the population just growing up, just figuring it out till you get to be old enough to say, well, I'm going to take care of this. And so I focus more on that part, on the emotional and uh, mental aspect of helping people to be functioning members of society, because that's what we, that's what we want. We want everybody to be able to advance. We want everyone to be able to have the knowledge that they need to make it to another point. And so here I am coming from a small town of Fayette, Mississippi, small populated, but I went all the way to Georgia and I went other places and I, I did what I knew from the beginning is to help people to reach outside of myself, to become community oriented, to come, you know, be my mindset is is about serving the people. And so with my books and with, you know, everything that I do, and even with Planning Positive Seeds, the conferences that I, you know, that I, I have every year in November, those are about serving others, serving that population that is looked over, serving the, the generations that need help, that need the guidance, that need that mentor to help them find their path or someone to be there to at least give them 
you know, a thumbs up. And that's what my writing does. Like, that's what it does. And that's what I wanted. I put out, I try to put out into the community, into the people that I talk to, into, you know, it surprised me when I I got the certificate at my house from uh, Benny Thompson. I was like, wow, you know, he got all the way there and he noticed me, but it, it was because of my relentless uh, ambition to help, you know, our society and our community to make it to a different and a better uh, mindset of, you know, moving forward. I'm sure that's it. I am sure that's it. And I, I am sure that the mental, you tapping into the mental and the emotional aspects of people's lives is is definitely the reason because, you know, that's where we can get stuck. That's where we can yes. get stuck and bogged mm-hmm. down and not understand how to release ourselves in the mental yes. and emotional aspects of our capacities because we don't oftentimes want to reveal what's really right. going on in those areas. So a lot of times it comes out not as desirable if we want as we want right. to right. if we don't know how to express ourselves and writing and just expressing and understanding and uh, relating to someone else is so important when you can see it pinned by someone else and you understand you're not alone in whatever you suffer or think or right. have to go through. That's very, very important. Now, you've also collaborated with some pretty sophisticated people and associations like uh, U.S. representatives uh, to Australia, London, South Africa, and Italy host. What would you say has made the largest impression on you collaborating with such big achievers? Oh, my goodness. Well, for well, me, it, it was amazing to me because I, even when I did the, um, the, South, Africa, the South Africa interviews and, um, you know, they, they were inviting, they want to invite me over there. You know, if I couldn't come over, they were saying, can you do a, you know, an interview, a television, like interview live so we can, you know, connect with you because of the fact they were like so many young girls, you know, over here in where we are, they need, you know, this type of encouragement or they need to see someone that looks like them that's saying, oh, wow, look, look what she's achieving. I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it too. And for me, just with my inspiration, just with the tenacity, because when I started Started out, I was a little shy. I, I never wanted to be all the way out in the front, but I just wanted to be the the the, the pin person, the pin pinner behind the words. I just wanted to put it out there any way that I could. And so now being looked on and being recognized in London and being recognized in all these places, I said, okay, I want to use this platform to let others know that you can do this. That let others know that you know, no matter where you you start, you can still achieve your goals. And these are some ways that I've done it, or maybe we can find some different ways for you because I'm solution focused. I, I like to look at what we have going on, but I like to have the solution in mind. And so being on those platforms in Australia, playing my, you know, my music from my um, conversations with God, the spoken word, you know, uh, album that I have, it touched me in a way that says that just because you may be from a small town does not mean that you can't go far and that you can't touch the masses and that, you know, you won't be able to, you know, do national and international things. And so with all the awards that I've won and all the other platforms, it just lets me know that I can continue to reach people. What we put out in the atmosphere right now, the books, the, you know, the writings, um, articles, radio shows, that it reaches the masses. So you continue to do what you do on your part, and then it will, it will come across the, the right person and, or the person that needs it at that time. That's really powerful. I think I understand why giving back and sharing um, is so important to you. I I really get it. I really understand your heart. I really understand um, your background. I really understand your penchant for uh, just sharing and inspiring others, entrepreneurs, children, artists, writers, Uh, all of them alike, uh, I understand. What do you want to share with the listening audience today, LaDonna? I just want to let them know to to be encouraged and to, you know, believe in yourself no matter, you know, what you, 
you know, what you've been through or, or what you may be currently going through. I just want you to start to believe in yourself um, because that will take you a long way. Sometimes you may not have people that are, you know, right there in your corner who are believing in you. But if you believe in yourself and you set your mind forward that you're going to make it no matter what and, you know, you'll be resilient. See, have that resiliency power to know that I can bounce back, that even if it takes one step at a time, that I can make it forward. Um, I think that's the most most important thing that I want people to just never give up, um, to keep moving forward, and that you will, you can make it, you know, to anywhere that you would want to be as long as you you believe in yourself. And so, that's like the biggest thing I would tell even my younger self if, if I was had a chance to go back and talk to me. I would tell myself just keep believing in yourself, and you know, there the sky isn't the limit. There is no limit, and so once you know that then you'll keep moving forward and you'll make it to where you have to go. That's so good. The sky isn't the limit. There is no limit. Can you stay with us until after the break? I'd like to ask you a couple of more questions. And then, of course, I want you to tell the listening audience how they can connect with you and get some of your body of work in their hands. Can you stay with us until after the break? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Well, Greg, let's go ahead and take our break and we will come back and talk a little bit more to LaDonna Marie. Daughter of Destiny is what God calls the dynamic woman of God, Dr. D. Greathouse. Let me tell you something. My life is anything but normal. When the Father and the Son are at the helm of it, and my best friend, the Holy Spirit, is guiding me every step of the way. Dr. Greathouse's uncommon journey of life has led her to succeed, survive, and accept God's fresh breath of life into her destiny and the lives of everyone she touches through the prophetic gospel and teachings of D. Greathouse Ministries International. When Jesus came to me in a vision, and we were on the mountaintop. He said something to me that has resounded in my spirit for years. And he simply said this, I have blessed you so that you can bless many. Dr. Greathouse will empower you to walk in the purpose God has for you. Now is your time to experience God's miracles taught in Dr. Greathouse's personalized gold faith package. You'll receive Dr. Greathouse's inspiring CD message, Faith, the Antidote. I want to talk to you for a moment about the supernatural faith, which is the gift of God. Learn how the gift of faith given to Dr. Greathouse gave her a personal testimony and an amazing healing from illness. Your healing will begin too as you read line by line of how she was able to forgive and minister after an unimaginable tragedy. She shares it all in her pages of her highly acclaimed book, What About Me? And from Dr. Greathouse's private vault, you'll also receive one gram of fine gold to remind you as God reminded Haggai, silver and gold are his. And with it, he grants the great gift of peace. Get the entire gold faith package today for your faith gift of $149.99 or for a gift of $14.99 receive either the What About Me book or the CD message Faith The Antidote call 855-334-7316 or log on to thegreathouseministries.com for the Gold Faith Package today that's 855-334-7316 or log on to dgreathouseministries.com today. Do you need someone with solid, expert communications experience to write your copy or your next press release? Then you need Pinstar Communications. Let Pinstar communicate your greatest potential with clear copy written for your business and marketing needs. Whether it's your next event or next campaign, Pinstar Communications can write that for you. Visit pinstar.org or call 404 404- 
828-0287 today. The blackness. guys we are back i hope you are enjoying this interview with writer poet businesswoman uh keynote speaker motivational speaker ladonna marie ladonna thanks for hanging around staying with us now i believe so your much. diverse appeal makes you nothing really short of genius but in what mode of writing would you say you are most comfortable um, I am most comfortable in, um, in actually writing poetry, um, in, in, in the inspirational, um, aspect of, of writing. Um, I know it's just, it's just something about me that, um, well, it's evident of just encouraging others. Um, but I write for like the, I write for teens as well. And so I have like this book that's called Lesson Shadow Pieces Being Restored, and it's one that I actually had won four awards from. But it was the one that um, had really touched my heart because I just feel like the youth um, are the, the you know the individuals that we have to train up, you know, and, and help them with the situations that they go through. Like you said earlier. Um, they don't have completely everything that they need uh, to make the decisions when they're younger and just being in that space. So for me, I started making my poetry almost like a story, but doing the poetry and being on the encouraging side, um, that's where I feel the most comfortable. 
Now you say becoming a writer and your love for words are your passions and greatest gifts from God and that they help you maintain a humble spirit. Explain that. Why? Uh, explain that. Well, for, the, humble, for me, the, um, the humble spirit part, I guess, is what I mean. <laughs> Well, well, the, hum- the humble spirit is because I'm I'm, I'm open because he gets the glory. Um, I, I really rarely talk about you know my awards or the things, but the reason why I do because I want him to get the glory because with this gift I am totally obedient. And a lot of people, you know, when when you write and even like now I'm I'm getting ready. I'm trying to put out a, like my sixth book, and there's been so much I want to say warfare. There's so much uh, stuff that's going on uh, when I'm getting ready to release a book. And so I'm humbled to know that it's not about me, but it's about what what the book is going to add into the universe, into the atmosphere, into the people that it's going to touch. Even though I am the vessel that he's using to do that, he gets the glory. And so I'm I'm just the scribe that, that he, I you know, I yield myself so that I can listen and, and get everything that he downloads to me. And then I go and I write it. And, you know, and I tell people all the time, like you said before, I have a, I have probably like three or four notepads. I write about three or four books at one time. I may not publish them all at one time, but that's the way I'm constantly listening and I'm constantly writing. And so I, I feel that, you know, my humble spirit is just if I can inspire people, because I love when people come back and say, LaDonna, oh, my goodness, this is, this helped me. I was at a point in my life where I needed, I was looking for restoration. I was, you know, needing to know how to be restored, or I read this and it changed my life. And so things like that, they make me, I just stay humble and say I'm thankful for the gift because had, had I not, say, had I said, no, I don't want to do this or this is not going to be for me, I wouldn't touch as many lives as God has granted me to touch and to put these, you know, materials out into the world and to help so many people. And so I stay humble and knowing that, like I said, it's not about me, but it's about the people that, you know, I'm supposed to help, you know, in, in such a time as this. That's beautiful. Tell the listening audience how they can connect with you or get you to speak to their uh, youth or uh, whatever groups or title subjects that you uh, prefer to speak on. Just tell them how they can best connect with you and get the worth of all of this gold that you have shared with the world thus far. Thank you so much. Well, they can go to my website, which is www.ladonnamarie.org, and on there you can uh, contact me on my contact page. I'm available on Facebook under LaDonna Marie. I have a personal page, and also I have a page for my books, and it's LaDonna Marie Books. So you can uh, find me on there, and um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn, author LaDonna Marie, uh, different places, Google Plus, LaDonna Marie. So anywhere you um, can, you know, find any social media uh, platform, I'll be LaDonna Marie and also LMB underscore poetry. But if you go straight to my to my website, which is www.ladonnamarie.org, and, and hit that contact me on page, and you will be able to contact me and also see my services as well as, um, the books and things that I have. I also have it, uh, my own um, television show, which is called The LaDonna Marie Show. It comes on every Tuesday um, at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. on www.jamvibetvnetwork.com. And so on there, I'm sharing uh, some inspirations from my books, also some messages that, you know, uh, out to the world that God would have me to inspire and encourage other people on that platform as well. That's pretty cool. Uh, how many books have you published, or how many published works do you have? Right now, I have five um, five published. Just me. Um, I've also co-authored. Um, I've co-authored five with other authors, and um, but I have three that's coming out this year. So they're unpublished, right? Remember, so I have three that's coming out this year. So right now I'm about five and five, uh, co-authored and uh, published works for LaDonna Marie. That's amazing. We thank you for your time today. Is there anything else you would like to share before we have to let you go? 
Well, I also just want to let people know that I do offer mentoring and consulting services on my website. That's my other company, which is uh, LMC Enterprises. So if, if there's anyone out there who would need help, you know, with their if they need some mentoring or book mentoring or consulting uh, for their projects as well, um, they can contact me on my website to get that help or publishing services. So I do uh, offer that as well. Well, I love writers almost as much as <laughs> I love game changers, and I love it when they go hand in hand. So welcome to the Game Changers family. Thank you so much, Miss Lisa. I appreciate <laughs> this interview. <laughs> it's my sincere pleasure. Take care of yourself, LaDonna. Hey, like Greg, you. before we, um, well, we don't have to take a break because I want you all to hear another um segment previously recorded from the archives of another great writer, author. I know you all are going to uh, enjoy and he's going to, and, and it's going to give you um, some tantalizing information from a movie we all enjoyed. But before we hear that segment, let me just uh, do a live promotion, if you will, to remind you about the Millionaire Girls Club uh, and their Black Tie Gala coming up. And they're proud to bring to you the Millionaire Girls Club Black Tie Gala is at the Sheraton Hotel in Atlanta, or it will be. And uh, it will be a night of empowerment, philanthropy, and excellence. You'll hear from great people like LaDonna Marie. You'll understand their worth and share and celebrate. It'll just be a time of celebration of accomplishments that are affecting women and people all over the world in all aspects of life. The gala will be held uh, at September 24th, like I said, from 9 p.m., from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. That's from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. And of course, because a great game changer, uh, Felicia Mack is doing it or sponsoring it, a portion of the proceeds will be donated to the Atlanta Women's Day Shelter. The general admission for the uh, gala is $197. The silver sponsor is $300. The gold sponsor Sponsor is $500 and the platinum sponsor is $750. So go to the Millionaire Girls Club or Felicia Mack Institute uh, and you'll find out more about it. The Millionaire Girls Club is a global organization founded in North America and they create authentic networks that are diversified in backgrounds, culture, and disciplines. Their aim is to assist women in business to connect, grow, and globalize in the marketplace. So check them out at the Mac Institute online. You'll be able to learn more about it. So without any further delay, I really want you all to hear this segment from a previous show. So Greg, let's go ahead. Uh, we will listen to a Game Changer classic for this segment. And the spirit of writers, I want to bring back one of my favorite interviews, and you'll hear why. So let's just go to that segment, Greg, and I'll be right back here to say a few parting words to everyone. So please keep listening about on social media jack Englehart's high concept moral dilemma dilemma drama indecent proposal remains one of the most famous novels around the world the novel was translated into more than 22 languages and sold millions of copies from continent to continent establishing it as an international classic then on to hollywood where over 266 million worth of tickets were sold worldwide from a Paramount movie of the same name starring Robert Redford and Demi Moore. Wow. We'll stop there and just get started and let you just and let me just say a very very huge welcome to Game Changers Mr. Jack Engelhard. <laughs> welcome sir. I'm so glad to be here. What a beautiful reception. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's my sincere pleasure. We've been anticipating and waiting for your uh, time on the show for several, several weeks now. I've been telling the listening audience you were coming. I know you want to oh. say a, a few words about some of your other works, but we have to start. We have to just talk a little bit about Indecent Proposal. That's what everyone knows you for. Did you know that you had such a hit on your hands when you wrote it? And what inspired you to write such a novel? Oh, wow. Um, 
I've always been uh, mystified by what happens to somebody who is so rich that he doesn't do, know what to do with his money. <laughs> that, that was, yeah, that was one part of it. Because um, at that time, I was doing research for another book, and um, I saw these people at the casinos driving up in these uh, $100,000 cars, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars at the craps table. Mm. One particular gentleman, yeah, one particular gentleman at one casino, I couldn't believe what I saw. Mm -hmm. And he was obviously a prince from some um, oil-rich country and betting really huge money. And the table was roped there off for him, uh, uh, off for him. And I wondered then, what could he want? <laughs> what could he? Yeah, he can buy anything he wants. Mm -hmm. Can he buy love? Mm. Can he get a woman who is so desirable but unattainable because mm. she's happily married? Wow. Uh, yeah. So then, that's the conflict right there. Mm -hmm. so in other words, yeah. And on the other hand, the uh, other notion that came up. The counterpoint to that is you have a happily married couple who are not really poor, but they're kind of middle class poor. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean by that? Yes, I do. Meaning it's never going to get any better. Mm -hmm. you, ah. You're living off a, right. You're living off a salary. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, what do you dream about when there's nothing more to go? I mean, you're gonna you're a happ you're, you're happily married, <laughs> and you're not starving, God forbid, but you're just it's going to be this way, not this way, for the next 30 years. Wow. And, and along comes this very tempting offer. Mm -hmm. and, um, and these are people who are, have high morals. I mean, if it were a, a, a class of people who just don't, there, there would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. The challenge is for what do you do if you have high morals, high ethics, and you're confronted with a million dollars to sell yourself more yes. for a while. It had yeah. all the right ingredients. I mean, the yeah. couple down on their luck, the beauty, right. Demi, the rich seducer, and the temptations and the lure of money, the real money that could change their lives forever. That's Boy, right. it was good. That was good. Um, yeah, and I, it you. is newly released and still selling yes. like the first release. Is that true? It's selling even better now. Oh, and my we goodness. Have it now on, yeah, we have it on Amazon, of course. Mm. And um, it's been all my books are being, re, are being republished right now. And we began, of course, with a decent proposal. And believe it or not, I, I was shocked to learn this. It is the 25th anniversary of the novel. Oh, no, wow. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, you have the novel. That is correct. <laughs> I can't believe. Now, you have to remember, I, I wrote that novel on the kitchen table in Philadelphia, we couldn't afford to pay for the air conditioning. Oh, my goodness. And I was perspiring away. On, <laughs> in those days, believe it or not, now a lot of your younger people wonder what I'm talking about, but it, it's a thing called a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> you actually put a piece of paper into the scroll, uh -huh. and you, didn't, uh, you couldn't send anything away. You had to actually bang it away at That's it. right. That's right. I remember my, yeah. well, I actually had an electronic or an electric typewriter, whichever way you say it. And it's such a classic. I still have it in my coat closet. I can't bring myself to put it on eBay. <laughs> but it was right. not only, um, you didn't, it was a game changer. It was a true game changer in so many ways. And now I learn for your life as well. How long did it take for it to take off and change your life? I mean, it ch I'm certain that it changed the course of your life. Well, number one, as far as a game changer in general, I'll get to my life in a moment. But <laughs> as far as changing the culture, what happened after that, the theme developed. It became part of our culture. What would you do for a million dollars? It became a series on television. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it was mentioned all over TV, and it became, there were games for it. It's a question that's still being asked. So, yeah, it's a game changer. Oh, my For gosh. Us, You're right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is something that's key, that, in, in respect to other situations, people ask that question. Mm -hmm. As far as our family, uh, yeah, as, as I just kind of hinted, we were struggling. <laughs> Mm. Uh, and um, so, do we dare well, draw any parallel, any other parallels in your life? Uh, I mean, you were struggling like the couple that. Oh uh, yeah, no, 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 that's what, no, no, no. Yeah, it's funny when I was uh, <laughs> when the book 
came out, I was on the Today Show with uh, Matt Lauer, mm -hmm. and that was his first question, and the answer is no, it has nothing to do with our lives. <laughs> it, it, it is, well, it is total fiction. It is total fiction. Now, Thank my coat, it is total fiction, total, total fiction that uh, served its purpose very well. My co-host here today, I believe, has read the novel, but I think he said he's never seen the movie, or is it the other way around? Which one is it? Well, ever? God bless, well, God bless him. <laughs> I know, right? Well, yeah, I was, one thing I was going to ask you is, um, you know, I know the book, the movie took some liberties with the book, and I was just kind of curious, you know, um, how did you feel about that? I didn't, I, I didn't mind it, mm -hmm. because... Yeah, yeah, at the very beginning, when you write a book, you say to yourself, well, if they ever make a movie out of it, then they, they, they better be true to the book. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're dealing with Hollywood, you're dealing with a whole different uh, bunch of people. And uh, my wife taught, told me ahead of time, now you read the book, so you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you know we're dealing with a sultan from an Arab country and with a couple from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not dealing with uh, these very middle-class kids such as Demi Moore and Woody Harrelson. Mm -hmm. My wife warned me. She said, look, you don't be surprised if they make the script. It'll be a uh, total all-American uh, kind of couple, not your couple, which is very ethnic. Mm -hmm. So I was ready for it, and they did it, and I didn't mind. Mm -hmm. As we always said, the, yeah, the, the, uh, the check cleared. So <laughs> no Wow. Well, we're honored to have you on Game Changers today, and um, I, I guess I say congratulations all over again for it still selling as well and reaching the 20th or the 25th anniversary, did you say? Yeah, incredibly enough, it is. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> wonderful. Now, you um, you have some other novels. I, I mean, just um, other bestsellers. Do you think any of your others are just as good as that indecent proposal, or how do they compare in your I, opinion? And it is your opinion well, to give. All right, <laughs> I'll tell you. I wrote a book called The Girls of Cincinnati mm -hmm. because at that time I was living in Cincinnati, and uh, I was a young guy, and uh, I had a wonderful, beautiful romance, and it broke up. And I left town heartbroken mm -hmm. and came to um, outside of Philadelphia and began banging away. At that time, I was already writing newspaper uh, articles. I was a newspaper journalist. And meanwhile, I was banging away at this novel. Making a long story short, um, it's been published finally after about 40 years. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to let it go. It, it's my baby, The Girls of Cincinnati. <laughs> and um, it's about heartbreak and redemption. Um, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I'll tell you this. It was written when I was young, and the older you get, the more books you write. And I've written for major newspapers, and I've written a whole bunch of novels ever since then. But that first flush of writing when you're so innocent and you don't know the tricks mm -hmm. is when it's, when it's most honest. So uh, The Girl of Cincinnati has now, has now been published, and uh, I'm very pleased with it. But there's another novel I wrote, which, which is also about gambling. It's about a compulsive gambler. Sure. It's called, and it is called Compulsive. Mm -hmm. I have that it, one. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you? Yeah, that got some very fine reviews. It is selling very well. And there might be a movie made, made out of that, too. Excellent. And, um, yeah, and it, it follows a young guy who is up against it. And anybody who's been up against it knows what that's like. I mean, so much of life is about pursuing and being pursued. Mm -hmm. uh, and being a, uh, so he has a lot of debts as a gambler. And uh, in order to pay them off, he's being tempted to do something. He's, you know, he's being tempted to write. He's a movie maker at the same time. He's being told, if you make this movie that's very bigoted, we'll uh, pay you all your money. You won't have to worry about your money. Mm -hmm. And he's a very upright guy. He would never do something like that, but he's facing life and death. I so love it. that's the theme there. Mm -hmm. Well, in closing, Mr. Englehart, what do you want to share with the listeners? What do you want the listeners to know, or how can you tell them to possibly attain uh, some of the success that you've had as a novelist? Okay, I would say mm -hmm. that, that's a very good question, Lisa, and I'd like to answer it very simply. Never give up. Amen. I like that. That's really good. Yeah, I never give it because from my experience, anybody who reaches a certain age knows if you want to attain anything, you are going to meet with a lot of failures. Mm -hmm. Don't let that stop you. Don't let you, you may stumble all you want, but you know something? You may fail 99 times, 
but that one success will wipe all that away. That's excellent. I think they should yeah. also pick up the Engelhard's Guide to Writing for a World Gone Berserk. I love that. And it's got oh, some really you. great tips in there. You you tell the novelists or the writers to be opinionated, to consider the novel just a long newspaper article, he says, Eric. Mm, okay. <laughs> just some really great advice. And um, anything else you want to share? No, just uh, just keep cool in, in, in this hot weather and go ahead and do whatever you have to do <laughs> and never let the feet get all of you. Keep going. Excellent. I love that. We sure thank you for your time today, and congratulations on your successes. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Take care of yourself. You too. The Sankofa Media Group is a mass media company that creates socially responsible, informative, and entertaining content that reaches audiences all over the world. Sankofa Media's leading-edge technology and know-how develops winners into who they were created to be. Timely radio and talent like Blog Talk Radios, abiding the tripartite. God tells us in his word we can have what we say, but we are always saying what we have. You must believe to the point of expectation and you shall receive and game changers with lisa faulkner i want to talk to the game changers i want to talk to the ones who the game was changed on but yet they triumphed i want to talk to the people who provide a platform for others to change the game for themselves sankofa publishes messages of love hope and redemption that connect with us where we need it the most the book what about me is a story of the kind of faith and courage that engages the reader to reflect personally and spiritually especially in these uncertain times of today it's a great thought-provoking page turner if you're ready to step out of the boat and join the sankofa media group in showcasing your god-given gifts and talents contact us today at 855-334-7316 that's 855-334-7316. Well, guys, we're back. And for, I hope you stay tuned because from one listener, from one writer to another, they both left us with the uh, great advice of never give up, never lift the pen from the paper. And here's what I want to tell you about writing. Do it often. Do it when you feel inspired and when you feel uninspired. Because pen to paper or fingers to keyboard always opens the mind and soul to fortune and wisdom that could change the game in your life and countless others. There is something about our written words that say so much more than our spoken words could ever hope to express. Writing allows our minds and experiences to become life, the life you live and the life others can relate to for that inspiration, elevation, and consolation. And because I know all of this to be true, I'm going to dip out right now to do a little writing myself, but not before I tell you one more time about the great Millionaire Girls Club event. Check it out, September 24th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's going to benefit the Atlanta Women's Day Shelter. Get over to the MAP Institute and find out more about it. Hey guys, I gotta go. It's been a wonderful hour. I will talk to you in 623. That's six days and 23 hours. Until then, do your best. Thank you for listening to Game Changers with Lisa Faulkner. For more details about anything discussed on the program, go online to www.penstar.org. That's P-E-N-S-T-A-R dot O-R-G. And be sure to follow Lisa on social media. On Facebook, look for Lisa M. Faulkner and follow Ken Star Lisa on Twitter and Instagram. And join us every week at this same time for Game Changers with Lisa Faulkner right here on Love 860 WAEC, Atlanta's inspirational talk radio.